On this week's Living Well with East Cooper Medical Center, we're debunking women's health myths that have to do with women in all stages of life. For this week's Living Well, I'm here with Dr. Alexandra Stiles from East Cooper OBGYN. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I'm sure there's a lot of myths out there when it comes to women's health. What should we know about this? What are some of those myths? Yeah, I think with you know, social media and Facebook and the internet, it's a good tool for patients where they're able to like look and learn about their mm -hmm. healthcare, but also you're right, a lot of misinformation and myths that can mm -hmm. develop. I think something that we see a lot as an OBGYN is that people know to use us when they're trying to get pregnant or when they want to have a baby. But the times before that and after that, we're a great resource for them as well. Mm -hmm. So before early when young women are starting to have their periods, mm -hmm. we can talk to them about the pain they're experiencing, are their cycles normal? Mm -hmm. And then sort of as they develop more sexual maturity, they may want to talk about safe sex and safe relationships and consent. They might want to talk about um, sexual tra uh, sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. and whether they need to do protection for that or screening or testing mm -hmm. for that or cons um, contraception. Mm -hmm. So thinking about ways to prevent an unintentional pregnancy. And then after pregnancies, when you are more in your middle age, perimenopause, postmenopause, you're going through a lot. Your body's changing in a lot of ways. So women notice things like hot flashes, night sweats, sleep changes, mood changes. Um, they may notice that intercourse didn't feel the same way as when they were younger, and they may want to talk about that. They may notice changes in their ability to hold their bladder or leaking with urine. So all of those are things that we're able to address in appointments with your gynecologist that you may not do in your normal appointment with your primary care physician because at those appointments you're talking about everything else. Yeah. So we're happy to see them at any point in their life to talk about those things. Yeah. What about pap smears? How often should we be getting those and at what age? Yes, yeah, so I think that's another big myth around women's care. So every time that you have a pelvic exam or women, you know, they see the dreaded speculum, that does not mean you're getting a pap smear. We do pelvic exams for lots of complaints. We do them for pelvic pain, abnormal bleeding, vaginal concerns mm -hmm. like discharge, odor, mm -hmm. itching, irritation. But a pap smear is a specific test that we perform. So we'll do the speculum exam and we're looking at your cervix, which is the muscle at the bottom of the uterus. Mm -hmm. And we start pap testing at 21 years old. That's a screening test for cervical cancer. We place the speculum, we do a quick plastic swab to kind of collect some of those cells. And then someone looks at them under the microscope and they look for precancerous or cancerous cells. Mm -hmm. Between ages 21 to 30, you do those once every three years as long as they're normal and things are coming back fine. Mm -hmm. After the age of 30, we add on a test called HPV or the human papilloma virus test. We know that that's a virus that 90% of people will have at some point mm -hmm. in their sexual lives mm -hmm. and it causes 99% of cervical cancers. Mm -hmm. If a woman has a normal pap test and they're negative for the HPV vaccine, they might decide with their doctors that they can space their pap test to every three to five years. Mm -hmm. Now that's different. We still want you to come to the gynecologist every year and let us take a look at the vagina, the cervix, make sure that it looks healthy and normal. And of course, if any concerns arise in those times, we're always happy to do an exam. But the pap test is critical to prevent cervical cancer. And it's a new year. Um, is there anything else we should know to get on top of our women's health? Yes. So. Along with your OBGYN, your primary care doctor might talk to you about things for routine maintenance. So starting at the age of 40, women should be getting a mammogram every year. Pap testing we just talked about. Um, also looking at things like your vaccines and your colonoscopies mm -hmm. that start at 45 now. So a lot of our screening recommendations are getting younger mm -hmm. as science is getting better and we're discovering things earlier. So always check in with your primary doctor, your OBGYN, and make sure that you're up to date on your screening so that we can catch things early and make sure that you stay healthy longer. And if someone at home doesn't have um, a gynecologist yet, where can they go? Yes, so um, Alexander Stiles, East Cooper, OBGYN. You can look us up online, you can call our office, and we're happy to see you. Perfect, Dr. Stiles, thank you so much for yes, being here. Yes, thank you so much.